Hello Tacticians, it's Nox here and today we're going to be looking at the new Battle Pass for Warhammer 40k Tacticus. Now this has taken a slight deviation to their normal Battle Passes purely because in this one we can now unlock Azrael. Now this is the first time they've actually allowed us to unlock a whole character as part of the Battle Pass, but let's see what else they've actually changed. The Battle Pass as a whole is very similar to what we have seen in the past where we will get approximately, if we discount the character shards, between five and 6,000 Blackstone worth of items. Now, there are a few extra good points and bad points, and let's have a look at them now. Now, as you can see, we get the extra 135 shards to help us unlock Azrael, and you will have to complete the entire Battle Pass track in order to unlock him. The other benefit is you actually are getting more epic upgrades than we've had in the past too, so we will actually be able to gear up Azrael to a higher standard. Now, they're not so good, it's not all pretty. There are actually five extra levels for us to do to unlock him before we can get onto the XP codexes. Now, this probably won't be much of an issue if you play every day, which you probably do if you get the battle pass, because you're probably getting this sort of level anyway. The only minor downside here is, of course, it takes longer to get to those much-needed XP tomes. The other downside is there's no legendary item in the track either. Now, personally, I've got two legendary grenades which I've yet to put on anyone, so whilst we're not getting a nice legendary item, you could say the other benefits we get in its place are probably better because you're actually going to use them rather than having them sit in your inventory. So if you've ever been on the fence of supporting the game and you're a fan of the Dark Angels, I would say this is a good time to get the Battle Pass. You are going to get a character who, in my initial impression, is actually going to be useful in certain areas, but you get a few extra bits and bobs too. Tomorrow we see the quest for Brother Jaeger start. Now I as you can see, have not got this character unlocked, but I have seen him used in the live PvP tournaments. So if you're a fan of Black Templars and the live PvP tournament, he may be a character for you. His active ability is the Holy Jewel, where he locks a target into single combat and immediately performs an attack against it. He deals extra damage and takes less damage from the target whilst it is taunted. Now, there's no way out of this taunt, from my knowledge, until one of the two characters are dead. So, as soon as he taunts someone, they're not going anywhere. Which means ranged characters can't shoot, and melee characters are, well, more than likely to be happy to trade blows for a while. His passive ability is Martial Superiority. So, whenever this unit gets attacked in melee, he'll immediately perform an attack against whoever is attacking him. So, as you can see, this guy excels in close combat. The big question is, is he worth it? You need 250 shards to unlock him, and if you purchase the offer that they'll probably give us, it means you can get a maximum of 90 extra. So, even if I was to purchase him, I still wouldn't unlock him. Part of me thinks it is a bit of a shame that the offers they give us don't guarantee the unlock of the character during their quest. There are probably new players who'd be more than happy to spend a small amount of money to unlock one of their favourite characters. And for those of us who haven't yet got the character unlocked and been playing for a longer time, it may be more enticing if we can see, like, oh, we actually get him. Personally, as it stands for me, I'm too far away for the offer to be worthwhile to even consider. Which is a shame, because I, I think this would be one character I would certainly consider unlocking if I had the chance. Having said all that, Brother Jaeger is a character I've only ever seen in the live PvP tournament. I don't really see him in the arena, and I've never heard of a team with him being used against the raid bosses. Later this week, I will also be doing a video about his quest, and unlike others, I won't actually be showing you how to do many of the levels, but I'll be focusing on what you should be farming from each level. So if you're ever interested in gearing up your characters and finding out what you really should be farming, tune into that one later this week. And if you or your guild are looking for a new home, feel free to reach out to any of us at these guilds above. We're always looking to add new guilds and members to our team as we've got a great community building here. And as always, we'll be seeing you on the battlefield.